Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite radical. We have the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 8, so on and so forth, where we have increasing powers of 2 inside the radical, and they're all cube roots. So this is an infinite radical, so definitely there's something to talk about here in terms of convergence, does this convert, so on and so forth. But we're going to go ahead and leave those boring topics to the professionals and just proceed with the solution. So to be able to simplify this, usually with these kinds of things, there are two ways to approach it. One method would be you take this, for example, let's think of a simpler problem like a finite case. Let's say you had the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 3. And you're trying to simplify this, like what is that going to be like, right? So one thing we can do is take the 2 on the outside and put it inside. So 2 on the outside basically means the square root of 2 squared. Of course, we're only dealing with positive quantities here, so we're not going to worry about any negative solutions. Uh, but you can just basically, for example, if you just had this, you could write this as 2 to the second times 5, and as you know, that will be the square root of 20. Oh, obviously, most of the time you're going to be going in this direction, but suppose you had to do this for some reason, then you would proceed that way. So we can do that, and when we do, this, this is going to be 2 squared times 5, but we still have the root 3 on the inside, and you're going to have like nested roots here. And then 2 squared times 5 can be written as 20, like I said earlier. So we're going to have this scenario now. And now this 20 can go also go inside as 20 squared. So that will be 20 squared times 3 under the radical, and there's another radical and yet another radical. And then 20 squared is 400 multiplied by 3. That is going to be 1,200 or 1,200, but it's going to be the square root of the square root of the square root of that. Of course, these nested radicals basically just means that every time you square root it, you're raising it to the power 1 half, and multiplying 1 half times 1 half times 1 half would indicate 1 eighth, which means this would be the eighth root of 1,200. And you can also write it as an exponential, so on and so forth. But that's how you would simplify these types of expressions. In the finite case, obviously, this is nice. But what about the infinite case, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let me clear this area and show you what that looks like in the infinite case. So we're going to go ahead and start with the 2. But remember, this time we don't have the square root. We have cube roots. So when you take that 2 and put it inside it'll become 2 cubed because the cube root of 2 cubed is 2, right? You can go back and forth, back and forth. And then one thing to remember, though, these are all powers of 2, so it's going to be easy to combine. In the case of 2 and 5, they're not the powers of the same thing. It'll be harder. The numbers are going to get larger. Here, you can do that. So we're going to have a cube root here, and then the 2 to the third will come in. We'll have the 4, and then we'll have the 8th and so on and so forth. Of course, this is infinite, so we have to continue. But now notice that we have the 2 under 2 cube roots, which means that's actually going to be the ninth root. Make sense? But before that, we can go ahead and take this 4 and combine with 2 to the third, because we can write the 4 as 2 to the second power. Then these two will combine to 2 to the fifth. So that's going to give us the cube root of 2 to the fifth, multiply by the cube root of 8, so on and so forth. It's just going to be dot, 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 and we'll still keep our two cube roots. Now, you have obviously different options. Either you can turn this into the ninth root or continue doing this with 2 to the fifth. You can take that and put it inside, but this time you have to multiply by 3. It's basically like, you know, raising it to the third power and then putting it under the radical. Make sense? I hope it does. So this becomes 2 to the 15th. Now we'll have 8, which is 2 to the 3rd. We'll have a cube root and another cube root and a third cube root. And of course, this will continue, right? Now you're going to get 2 to the power 18. And this will just continue. So what happens is you started off with a 2. You cube it. So in other words, that just multiplies the power by 3. So multiply by 3 and then add 2 to it which gave you 2 to the 5th, and then that power you'll multiply by 3, and then add 2 to it, and you'll just doing this. 
And that's going to be like a crazy, crazy power. Arithmetic or geometric or series, something like that. I don't know. Multiply and add, multiply and add. You keep doing the same thing. There's going to be a pattern, obviously. But uh, on the other hand, you're going to have the radicals stacked up, right? So you're going to have the cube root of the cube root of the cube root of so on and so forth. So that they'll all be multiplied as well. So you're going to have a bunch of threes being multiplied that come from the radicals, the indices. And then you're going to have a bunch of powers that are growing inside. So how do they catch up? That's a good question. And this is basically going to approach infinity, right, as you increase the number of roots. So that's kind of like a pretty crazy scenario, don't you think? So if you call this the first method, uh-oh, the first method fails. Too bad. Okay, that's what usually happens most of the time. But let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which was actually my original intention, because that's the whole idea. How would you approach this problem? Not like that differently okay so let's go ahead and take a look at it so instead of trying to get the two inside and then combine with the four and then put it all inside by just growing everything focus on individual numbers like for example what happens to this two it's under one radical we don't care about the rest i mean that's some type of quantity we'll get to that next but you have cube root of two, correct? Okay, great. So here is the scenario you have. You have the cube root of two, and then we can separate these now, times the cube root of four, but remember, the four is being cube rooted twice. So it's kind of like the cube root of the cube root of four. Make sense? And then you have the cube root of the cube root of the cube root of eight, and guess what? This will continue. If you want me to write one more, it'll be the cube root of the cube root of the cube root of the cube root of 16. And again, this will continue forever, right? But here's the thing. We seem to get a pattern from here. What kind of pattern? Look, two is under one radical, four is under two radicals, and four is two to the second power. Eight is two to the third, and it's under three radicals, and 16 is two to the fourth, and it's under four radicals. Great, that's a pattern, and it goes on forever like that, and you can verify that, you know, it just goes on like that. So we can do the following. Since 2 is going to be under 1 cube root, we can write it as 2 to the power 1 third. But what about these? Well, this will be the ninth root of 4, right? This will be the 27th root of 8. This will be the 81st root of 16, and so on and so forth, and this will be the cube root of 2. So how do you handle these different powers? Well, this is 2 to the first power, cube root, that'll be 2 to the power 1 third. This will be 2 to the second power, 2 to the power 2 ninths. This is the critical part. Then this will be 2 to the power 3 over 27. Let me tell you something. Don't simplify this. You need that pattern, okay? And then times, you're going to get 2 to the fourth, but that'll be divided by 81. And this will go on forever. Hopefully you get the pattern after a few terms. Once you get the hang of it, you don't really need to overstretch it or just try to beat a dead horse, right? You already got it. Now, we're going to go ahead and add these powers up because notice how nicely something infinite radical, infinitely radical, radically infinite, turns into something exponential. And of course, working with exponentials is fun, don't you think? We get 2 to the power 1 third plus 2 ninths plus 3 over 27, plus 4 over 81. Do you get the pattern? If you didn't, let me tell you. Ready? Okay. So the numerators of these fractions are consecutive integers. 1, 2, 3, 4. The denominators are powers of 3. 3 to the first, 3 to the second, 3 to the fourth. Uh-oh. So how do we do that? So here's what we need to talk about. We need to be able to add this. This is an infinite series, but if we can add like find a finite answer if it converges, and I already told you, we're not going to worry about it because it, it, it does, but someone can go ahead and, you know, prove that if they want. To be able to solve it, we're going to kind of taking it to another territory, from the constants to the variables territory, because it's easier that way. Obviously, you can do it in so many ways, which I can show you, or should I? Just forget about the variables and just continue with this. So here's how it goes. This is 1 third plus 1 ninth plus 1 over 27 plus 1 over 81. This will continue. This is like a normal geometric, right? But then we need 2 ninths. So we kind of need to start the same series with 1 ninth and continue in the same manner. And the other terms are not going to hurt. They're actually going to help. But then we, didn't, we do need the 1 27th three times. So start with the 1 27th and continue in the same manner, dot, dot, dot. And 
you know, you're gonna next pick up from 181 and so on and so forth, right? So, all the sum of these infinite series, infinitely many, each of them is an infinite series and you have to add them infinitely many times. It's kind of like infinite squared, right? And then, but the idea is simple, look, we can simplify this. This is a1, the first term, divided by one minus the first term. Remember the formula? A over one minus R. Sorry, I said first term, but I meant the common ratio. So that's how you add something like this. A geometric series, an infinite geometric series, if it converges, and if it does, you know why? Because one third is less than one, and between negative one and one. So that's the formula. So we can apply it easily. Here the same thing, one ninth, divided by 1 minus 1 ninth. Sorry, 1 third I meant, because the common ratio is 1 third. So the, the denominators are all the same. You know what? That's really cool, because that allows you to be able to add these fractions easily. Take a look at this. The next one is going to be 1 over 81 divided by 1 minus 1 third. So we always have 1 third in the denominator, so we only need to add the numerators, which are the same things. 1 third, 1 ninth, 127th, 1 over 81, all of these are going to be added. And of course, the whole thing needs to be divided by 1 minus 1 third, which is dividing by 2 thirds, which is multiplying by 3 halves. Sorry if I skipped too many steps, but that's the whole idea. You can also do the same thing, hopefully, right? Basically, it was this whole thing divided by 2 thirds, but instead of dividing by 2 thirds, I just wrote times 3 halves. So this is the answer. Well, not the answer, but kind of the answer. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Again, we get this. So that'll be 3 halves. I put that in the front. And then times, this will be 1 third divided by 1 minus 1 third. Again, the same idea. This will be 3 halves times 1 third divided by 2 thirds, which is 1 half. 3 halves times 1 half is going to be 3 fourths. Of course, that's not the answer. You know why? Because if you go back to where we came from, the... 3 fourths is just the exponent. So the answer is 2 to the power 3 fourths, which is actually the 16th root, wait a minute, not, that's not right, the fourth root of 8. So yes, that would be the answer, 2 to the power 3 fourths. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.